kids aren't here. Which means, you smell that? I took a shower. I can still smell the shampoo. There's no macaroni and cheese in my hair. So let's get started. It's time to party. So, if you're wanting to do a do-it-yourself paint night, but you don't really know where to start, I got you covered. I'm gonna show you a few different simple, easy paintings that you can do with your friends. Everybody will be successful. Um, it'll be a fun time. So for this project, what you will need is some type of canvas. Um, this, this is the type of canvas that comes in like a cheaper packet. You could probably get them um, on sale at the craft store for like f in a bundle, five for $10 or five for $20 or whatever it is. Um, you'll notice it's not like super nicely stapled around the back. Um, a gallery wrapped canvas is gonna be a lot more expensive and sold individually. So that's gonna look more like this where you see it's wrapped around and double backed there. If you are looking to have some type of easel, you can also get these fairly inexpensively. They are pretty cheaply made. Um, but remember, it's just if you're using a smaller canvas. This canvas is 12 by 12. So that'll fit on something like this nicely if you wanna be fancy and do that. Most people are just gonna like put down some, put down a um, like cardboard or newspaper or tablecloth and you're gonna lay it on your table and do it that way, which is also totally fine. I just wanted to point out some options there. Now, these packets of paintbrushes come fairly inexpensive. This is a packet of 10. Um, my guess is that I also got it on Amazon. You can get it at the craft store as well. Um, but again, they'll be sold individually at the craft store and not like in a pack um, of more than one of these as you can get online. So for this, you wanna look and see, this one says ideal for watercolors, oils, and acrylics. We are using acrylics today. And then in the next video, I'm also going to show you um, really easy watercolors to do. That way, if this is all too much and too intimidating, watercolors is a much simpler setup. So this packet of brushes, which you can share among friends, or you can each have your own pack, has all these different sizes. Um, so you have ones for small detail, rounds, flats. Um, I'll go ahead and set these here. Um, you'll need something to have as a cup of water. I already, um, you know, use random old jars, but you know, a, a solo cup will do. Uh, disposable plates will do for paint. Today we're gonna use acrylic. Um, and if you're on a budget, all you really need is blue, red, and yellow to make any color. Black for, for tinting and white for making your colors lighter, okay? You don't need this big of a white. I just use white a lot because I paint often. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you a simple silhouette painting that anybody can do on any skill level. Honestly, if you have kids, this is a great project to do with kids. Um, it will, it really will make them love art. Um, they'll, they'll think they can do anything. They, it always turns out wonderful. Um, I've taught ages junior kindergarten, which is preschool, um, through eighth grade. And this project never fails at any age. Um, so don't worry, it's pretty foolproof. It'll be great. Always have paper towels on hand, you're going to need them. Um, so let's get started. What I'm going to do is mix my colors. So I'm gonna do a sunset. Um, and then we're gonna do a nice little like, I think maybe mountain, mountain silhouette. And then there's no drawing needed for this. You're gonna do it all with the brush. silhouette and then we can have a little water at the bottom if you want it but you don't have to so I'll, I'll talk as I go with options you can do everybody's can look different I'm not loving this red color but it'll do oh, another thing when you're picking out colors if you want your red to be a little warmer pay attention to the way it looks this is more of like a fire engine red almost 
So when you go, if you're at the store, when you go to pick out your colors, um, look, at, look at them to see if you want them to be a little bit more warm or a little bit cooler. This carmine right here, it's a little bit warmer, and I'll show you what I mean by that. It'll be a little prettier for the sunset. So if you look here, this red kind of has just a little bit warmer quality, and this is almost like a red orange. So I'm gonna stick with this one instead. Um, so that's something to look out for. This one will work, but it just won't give me quite what I want. So we're gonna work a few breaks into this. So if you're doing a paint and sip party, there'll be one step and then you'll have like a break to get refills and whatnot while part of it dries. And then you'll go back for the next step. Um, and there might even be time for like a second step in there. So acrylic is water-based, which means if I want, if I want my paint to go on like really thin and easily, then I wanna mix it with water. Now what you can do first um, is you can always, take a little water first and like if you're doing a sky you can kind of paint on the canvas a little bit just to wet the canvas so so that it goes on a little smoother and I'm just taking my biggest brush right now since I'm doing still a large area that's my big flat brush and You could also take a squirt bottle. I do that sometimes. But, you know, I'm trying to do this right now with as little materials as possible. That way you're not spending a fortune on your fun paint night. So everybody doesn't have a squirt bottle just for water lying around. Okay. So when we are having our sunset, right, you have, um, and we're just gonna go ahead and paint our whole canvas with these colors, um, but you have your white yellow mixture for your sun area. So depending on how much sun you want showing, I'm just gonna mix some of my white with my yellow, it's a very light yellow. And we're gonna go with about two thirds of the way up the canvas. You don't want to do it right in the, at the half mark. It kind of splits your picture in half and doesn't look as nice as it could. So we're going to go take the middle, we're going to go up a little bit, and I'm going to have that be where my sun is setting. And so I'm just going to have a little bit of yellow there with some extra white in the middle because it's the brightest right there where the sun is setting. Okay. And the reason I'm going to go down this way a bit as well just because we're going to do a little bit of water later. And once this dries, we can do um, our silhouette right on top. Now, right outside of our white and our yellow, I'm gonna have a little bit of orange. So I'm gonna take a little bit of this red and I'm gonna mix it with the yellow. Need a bunch of fancy stuff with this. You don't need a palette knife. You don't need all these things. You can just use your brush. And add a little bit of orange here. And I don't want too much orange just because I don't want it to, for me personally, if you really like orange, that's fine. Um, I don't want it to like totally overtake this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rinse my brush. I'm gonna leave some of the water on it. And then I'm just gonna kind of blend it in. Now, be careful, you might, you really need your paper towel on hand for this because it might start to drip. It's not a big deal. The great thing about acrylic is it dries fast, you can paint right over it, and you can add water to it and kind of erase it a little bit. So I'm just gonna kind of blend that in a little bit, a little bit more. Okay. Now, I think I took away a little bit too much of my yellow, so I'm gonna go back for me. I'm gonna go back with, with some white with some yellow and add that back in just a little bit. Now, 
I love my pinks and my purples for my sunsets. And so I now, now that I'm switching to pink, I'm gonna rinse a little bit because I don't want any, I don't want much yellow in there. Um, it's gonna come out too orangey. Um, so for my pink, pink is just red. Red mixed with white. So I'm gonna take a little red, take a little white. And remember, you can you don't need a, pa a palette like I have. Just use a disposable um, disposable plate. So you just throw it all the way afterwards. Um, for me, that's wasteful just because I, I paint so much. So I use an actual palette. So now I have my pretty pink there. Um, and I'm gonna add some pinks. If you notice, I'm kind of bowing down a little bit because our sun is round. So I'm just gonna give it just a slight bow so it's not just like perfectly straight right across. And I'm just gonna do this a little bit messy. A little messy here. Um, it can go back over. I'm gonna blend it back over the orange a little bit. Um, but the reason I did a little messy is because I'm gonna come back in with my purple, which if you remember from grade school, red and blue make purple, but I want a little softer, so I'm just gonna add it to this pink over here. And it'll be this kind of nice dusty purple. And I'm gonna mix that. If you turn your brush from flat to side, then you can get kind of these thinner lines like this. So if you want them to go in between the pink a little more, whatever's left on my brush go here. Now, you see there's all this white on the canvas. I'm just gonna rinse my brush again. I'm gonna go back in with my water. I'm gonna smooth it back out again. See, there's my drip, but that's okay. So I can just take a second, take my paper towel and wipe it. Now that wiped really easy because it was mostly water. Um, so if you just do it right away, it'll be fine. But if you wanna avoid the drips, you can also, when I go back to, when you go back to get water, you can dab it a little bit on your paper towel beforehand if you're just worried about messing it up. Which is totally understandable. Okay, now that I'm getting to the top, I wanna to add in a little bit of that night sky. So I'm gonna take a little bit of that blue and I'm gonna add it in here. And this might even be a little bit too bright for me, but I'm just gonna, I'm gonna wait and see what happens. Sometimes if I want it to be really dramatic, I'll add a little bit of black to this. But I think I might wanna keep it a little soft today, a little, a little more cotton candy looking, okay. And now I'm just gonna do the same thing again, take a little water. Now, if you want to have a body of water in your painting, you do not have to. With what we're doing, you can just, we can do a, you know, a skyline silhouette and you can keep it simple. But if you want to have that silhouette here, you are going to do the reverse image of what we just did. So at the bottom here, you're going to want to do your blues and your purples. So I'm, I'm not gonna go all the way to the edge just because it's a little bit of a waste um, of time. So I'm gonna do my blue at the bottom here and then go back into my purples. It's just a mirror of the sky, right? So I'm gonna add these colors in. Now the cool thing is, is if, you're, if you want your water to kind of be moving and not still, we can add a little texture to it in a moment. So I know that a lot of this, is, some of this is gonna be covered up. So I turned my brush to the side and then just went back and forth this way to kind of make those lines to look like that um, my water's moving. You know, get 
that ripple effect. It's the same colors. But done like that creates more kind of ripple effects. And you go back into some orange in between here as well. The way I said that reminded me of um, of Olaf and Crimson or Chartreuse. If this is totally just not something you want to do, but you are interested in having a paint party and you live in the DC area, um, it's a lot of fun. I, I will totally come out and host a paint party for you at your house. Um, my website is mixedvibes.us. Uh, you can go on there and just like go into one of my um, my question portals. It's free to ask a question, see how much it would be, how many people you're thinking. Um, or if you need a custom picture made, uh, I do portraits, landscapes, really anything you can think of. Um, and same thing, just hop on my, my custom art portal and ask me anything that's mixed vibes dot us so if you see this kind of gives more of like a water ripple effect all right if actually i'm gonna add a little bit of white in here let's do that and a little bit of white side by side lines and if you notice i'm not using my wrist i'm moving my whole hand back and forth kind of like a machine to give me these lines more if you use your wrist you're going to start to get a curve because your wrist is a, is a ball ball joint so you're gonna get that kind of curve look going on um, all right it's break time so if you need a bathroom break or if you want to get a refill on your beverage it's time to do that now make sure that your brushes get rinsed and go in the water you can get new water if you want to now as well we're gonna let this dry for about five to ten minutes um, it was such a thin coating that it should dry pretty fast. If you have like little mini fans and you wanna put those on as well, it'll help dry it a little faster, um, but you can already see that some of the sheen is going away and it's starting to dry on its own. So, time to take a break, grab your drink, and we'll be back in five to 10 minutes. All right, you guys, so now that we're back from the break, this was five minutes, mine's dry. Okay, now we can see where we missed some spots, right? There might be some little um, speckles of white in there. Um, in your sky, it doesn't really matter that much because a lot of times there's like little clouds, things like that. But if you don't want those there, I'm gonna go back at the end, I'm gonna fill those in. But what I wanna do is go ahead and get started with our silhouette first. And as that's drying, we can go back and put some finishing touches in the sky if we want to. Okay, so I think for this, I'm gonna switch to a smaller brush to begin with, one of my uh, smaller tip brushes. Okay. And I went ahead and I put some black on my palette. I was naughty and didn't change out my um, water. I was too busy drinking my coffee and putting my hair up. Okay, so I put a little bit of water on this brush because it was new, so it still had that like new brush like glue that they put on it to make it all pointy, um, but just a tiny little bit and then to mix the black paint. Now, the important thing to remember now, no matter how old your child is or how um, young they are, or just if you're a, a group of adults, um, Mountains are not triangles, people. This is not a cartoon. So when we go to do our mountains, I want to keep some of my sunset showing. So I want one of my low points to be somewhere in this yellow. And so I think I, I personally like to have it not quite in the center, so maybe a little off center. So I like this little white area here so I think I'm gonna leave that so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of go up at an angle here and what I tell my students is kind of pretend like you have the shakes like you're a really old person 
that has the shakes or like it had too much caffeine. So I'm gonna put, I'm gonna kind of shake my hand a little bit and kind of just go up and down my arm and shake and shake. And maybe I have a peak here. It just kind of levels off, okay? And this is, I'm creating my mountain line. Now, don't worry if you don't like it, we can adjust it, okay? And I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna be kind of shaky because these are pretty rocky mountains, right? So I wanna make sure that I'm getting cool angles. Okay, so now what I mean by if you don't like any of your lines, before we go to fill it in, okay, you can look at it back. I always recommend back up and look at it and see, okay, you know, where did I go too high or too low? If you think you went too high somewhere, we can go back later and go over this with some sky. So if you want to redraw it lower, you can. And then later, we can go back over it with similar color, with the sky color, and it'll be fine. It's like it never happened. If you want to make something higher, same thing. You just drop above, it's even easier. Maybe I want this part to be higher, more of a gradual slope. Then it can look like that, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is instead of painting this whole mountain, well, I'll use the small brush to paint in these peaks. So I'm gonna get some more paint. I want to keep it. I'm just going to go ahead and start to fill those in. Nice and soft. Take your time here. You can kind of rush on the next part. But what you don't want to do is end up smoothing out all those nice little rigid peaks you already made with your wobbly hand. This is much easier with more paint on your brush. Or if your paint is a little drier, you can add a little bit, add a little bit of water to it, but not too much because if it drips right now, you don't want it, the black to drip down onto this water. Again, it's not the end of the world. I can wipe it off really fast, but sometimes it'll leave a little bit of a tinge to it. Also, you kind of have to make a decision on, are your mountains a little bit closer up? Are they further away? Are they far away and just huge mountains? Um, so that's going to make your decision on how low we go with this black. What does your body of water look like if you have one? If you didn't do the body of water, that's fine. You can do this whole thing in black um, and keep it really simple and then we can add some trees on at the end there if you did not want a body of water. And I can, I will, of course, we'll show you that. And if you make a little mistake, it's like Bob Ross says, happy accidents. Um, so if you accidentally, say you accidentally, you know, go like that, okay, so what? Just kind of make it look like you always meant it to be there. It's a mountain, these are all natural shapes. Nothing's perfect. So I think for mine, I would like to keep it, I would like to keep a lot of my water. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna test it out. I think I'm gonna just kind of, and remember all these lines aren't going to be water. This would be like where, like your ground, like your grass, you know, starts to meet. But I think this is more of a shape and I'm just gonna do a little bit at a time and then 
I'll be adding some trees to go over top. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is now that I have kind of my circle around what I want my shape of my body of water to be, where it disappears over here, I'm gonna go ahead and take a bigger brush. And it can be that same brush that you used earlier if you want. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and fill in these areas. Fill in all this area. Remember this paint is dry now, that is underneath, after a little break. So it'll go right over top. Excuse me. This water is a little bit, it's moving a little bit because we did the little back and forth line. So it's not gonna be exactly like what the mountain shows, but it's gonna be a little, little bit of an edge there. So now what we can do is for this like ugly part here where the <laughs> where the uh, water is meeting the edge of the grass right now, but we want to keep it silhouetted, we can kind of make it look like there's some uh, foliage hanging over, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of do some lines that make it look like sticks. I'm not going to do too many. And it's too... too much white dots in between just add a little bit of water again because your paint might be drying a little bit on your um, on your palette so um i'm gonna make some stuff like this and then you can just kind of tap 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 around to make it look like some type of leaf or bare leaf or vine we're not being specific here and i'm not pushing my brush all the way flat, right? When I'm doing this, I'm just like tapping it real gentle with the end to create a texture. Real gentle, gentle taps like that. So that's creating some type of overhang on the edge there, okay? And this is, again, where everybody's is gonna start to look a little different because maybe you just wanna have like tall grass reeds, which is fine. So I'm gonna do a bunch of those. Just wanna keep it simple. All right, adding a little water to my paint again. I'm gonna have some tall grass around my water. Short grass around my water to bridge that gap between the water and the 
somewhere. Mm-mm. Trying to decide maybe, maybe I'll add a little tree up top there, like on the edge going over. We'll see. We'll see. It's one of those game time decisions where you step back. I just noticed this paint was a little thick, so I can adjust that right there. Okay. way as if there's something larger there drooping down that we can't see necessarily. I think this one I'm going to do a little bit more detail to make a little more lines. This so it looks like a different plant instead of little branches. And the cool thing about silhouettes is you never know where the one comes from. There's not a whole lot of detail. Like these little shapes are the most detailed I'm getting. And you know, they're just little, little splotches. And if you don't like them, wait a couple minutes, let it dry, and go back in with some color over top and try again. But I find that just like adjusting them a little bit ends up working just fine. Maybe you want to look up a picture, add a little bird, add a little crane there if you want to, or some ducks on your water. Maybe you're feeling a little adventurous today. Maybe this is a huge lake and you add a, a little boat that's really tiny to show how big the lake is. That could be cool. Like maybe, let me see. What kind of boat should I do? Like a like a canoe or just do like a little canoe like a romantic canoe maybe a ravine so it's gonna take a little line right another person in a circle Nothing you can't do, right? Not a whole lot of detail, it's just a little circle. A little line and a little circle. Okay. All right, last but not least, I think I am gonna go ahead and add that tree up here. So, let's do, maybe there's a big tree all the way around the edge. So I'm gonna get my big brush. Um, so for this whole painting, I've actually only used two brushes, but be more than welcome depending on the shapes you're using or if you're just more comfortable switching brushes because one's too wet or whatever you feel like. Um, I'm switching back to my big one and I am going to, I think I'm gonna have one branch come this way. I'm not gonna have another branch on the other side. The reason I chose this side for this branch is because my mountains over here are a little bit more visually heavy than on this side. See, there's like the big opening where the sunset is. So I, I'm gonna add this branch here so that we know it's a tree. Okay. And right now I'm doing my sideways. This might be easier if you're not very experienced with brushes. This might be easier to do with one of your tiny brushes. Okay. But I'm not gonna do another branch. Um, I am going to do my speckles. different brushes will give you kind of different shapes so I'm still just using this again but it gives me kind of like a different leaf shape all three of these are different leaves um, but then I can come in here and do the same shape and it'll give me the appearance that this tree is massive maybe even behind us and we're just seeing the tips of the tree coming down the very tip 
or maybe we're sitting under the tree watching the sunset. This would be a good date night painting. If you notice, all my stuff is kind of pointing back, kind of brings your eye back to this beautiful sunset that we made. All of these lines are kind of pointing down this way, you know, to bring us back to the center. The grass is pointing up to bring our attention back to the center there. All right, we're almost done here. And to, at this point, you can kind of go off on your own and add some things if you want to, change some things. You want to go back in. Um, you want to go back in and add. Um, you just want to do some clouds. You can add some clouds in there, which is really just adding white with you know your other base colors. some of these little white sprinkles that I left in before. And actually, if I just add a little bit of white to this, then it kind of makes these like tiny little cirrus clouds anyway. Now I have these kind of purpley white, tiny little, tiny little cirrus clouds. Just white. You see how it's kind of this purpley? So if I add a little bit of white for my highlight on my cloud. And then if I go back and add a little yellow on my sunset. Again, you don't need to add this. This is just an option. Um, the smooth sunset was really nice, but maybe it's too big, or you know, yours looks a little different, and you want to adjust it a little bit. It's totally fine. Now that um, almost everything is dry, you know, you don't have to worry about your yellow mixing with your blue up here, making green or anything. Now I do like this. It kind of gives this milky, milky cloudy look. So remember what we talked about happy accident. Better with a little interest. Yeah. 
I like that. There we go. Now this is more like thin clouds. Clouds are tricky sometimes. You just gotta play around with it until you like it or you don't. Sometimes you just cover it up all together. In this case, I blended it in a little bit. And it turned out really nice. Um, now I'm just pulling a little bit, a little bit more of the like white and purple that I had. Adding it in there a little bit more. To kind of give the clouds a little bit more, almost a little shadow. A little shadow. You do know that there are some clouds there. Lovely. All right, I'm gonna step back and take a look. And I encourage you to step back at least like five feet or so. Take a look at yours and see if there's anything you wanna change at this moment before you finish up. And I think for mine, I wanna add a little bit of a little bit more grass right here in the corner. I thought it felt a little bare there for me. too much white showing there on that canvas. so much going this way. I kind of want one of these in the opposite direction. That way it's not so uniform. Maybe even a little, maybe a one. Since I have my people over here, I think I'm going to just do a little, little cat. usually in groups, so maybe let's make a couple of them. A couple of cattails. I'm just gonna push a little harder and make this wider. And a little tip. And again, this is something I made in my adults where my older kids are gonna add. Um, with the younger kids, you could have stopped, you know, you could just do the sky and the mountain and stop there. Um, but it can be a project you do with your kids over multiple days. So you do the sky one day, and then you go back and do the mountains the next day. And then the third day, you do some other detail. That'll keep them from getting really frustrated um, with maybe their paint mixing with each other and possible mistakes there. So I'm happy with this. I hope you are happy with yours. Um, I like to paint my edges. Right now it's white on the edge. Um, I usually go through and I'll paint my edges black or um, depending on what project I'm working on, um, it'll be a certain color. I don't know, I think it just gives it, let me see, make sure this is dry. I think it just gives it kind of like a nice, nice finish quality to it when you paint the edge, even if you don't have um, a frame. It's nice to have a nice little painted edge there. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. In my next video, I'm gonna show you how to paint your pet. Um, and uh, easy portraits. So there's no drawing needed. Um, we're actually gonna do a little cheat and do some tracing. Um, so it'd be fun for everyone. I hope you enjoyed. If you like this video, please hit that like button um, and subscribe to get all of our new updates. Thank you.